This is my 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser 79 Series 4.5 litre V8. This has been a long time in the making. Welcome to Get Out Go, I'm Christoph, and in this series I'll go through the reasons why I've purchased this vehicle for overlanding, as well as the entire build process. The 79 Series needs no introduction to most overlanders. It's helped explore the outdoors for generations. In this series, I'll go through the pros and cons of this vehicle and why I selected it, especially over the new 2.8 litre version. Straight out of the box, this is a very capable vehicle. However, for living on the road long term, I do need to make a few modifications to it. In this episode, we'll start fitting some accessories primarily to improve capability, safety and comfort. Let's jump right into it, starting with the bar work. For this build, I opted for an opposite lock bull bar. Why add a bull bar in the first place? My main reason for a bull bar is to protect against animal strikes, but it's also a mounting point for your winch, rated recovery points and accessories like spotlights and your radio antennas. Fitting this bull bar is pretty straightforward. We do need to remove some of the trimming to fit the winch as well. Once the original bump is removed, we can start fitting the bull bar. The bull bar simply bolts straight onto the chassis. We're also mounting the winch in the bull bar before fitting it to the car. This is a steel bull bar weighing in at around 68 kilograms. It is airbag compatible and ADR compliant. It comes standard with mounting points for three antennas and spotlights. I'll show you the full electrical install in a later episode as well. I opted for a worn winch uh, on this build, always wanted to warn, and this time we're trying it out. It is a synthetic line, 12,000 pounds worn winch. This 12,000 pound winch is part of Warn's new VR Evo range of winches. Warn's been an industry leader for over 70 years, and these are their lowest amp draw and fastest line speed winches under load yet. It's IP68 rated and with a remote that's both wireless or corded. I usually opt for a synthetic winch line to reduce weight and for improved safety. This is the first build where I've actually added spotlights. Um, I usually don't advise driving at night in Africa, but uh, a few times now, like Namibia, we found ourselves on some treacherous trails in the middle of the night. It's just one of those things. So you do need good lighting. Um, I've opted for light force lights and um, LED replacements for what seems to be like little kerosene lanterns in the 79 series. Mm -hmm. 
Now, as you can see, these properly light up the road. This Lightforce LED upgrade kit upgrades the standard halogen globes and are dead easy to fit. They make a huge difference though. These Lightforce spotlights though, These are the Lightforce Genesis Professional Driving Lights. They produce a massive 1120 meter output through 37 LumiLED LEDs. On this build I've again opted for a Gobi X rear bar. That gives you rated recovery points, a tow bar, as well as swing arms where you can add spare wheels or jerry cans. The 79 series doesn't come with a rear bumper, tow bar or recovery points. The Gobi X fitment is also a fairly straightforward bolt onto the chassis fitment. It's a steel bar and it weighs in at around 60 kilograms without the swing arms. I again opted for a snorkel on this build. Um, the Land Cruiser does come with a raised air intake. It is not a snorkel though, because it's not a sealed unit. If you venture into fairly deep water with that, you have a heap of trouble. So this is an LAS snorkel. It is sealed. Um, it does prevent water ingress up to a point, but it does not turn your car into a submarine. It's primarily for a raised air intake so that you get cleaner, cooler air. Uh, but it does prevent some water ingress. Um, you have to look at the weighting depth of your vehicle as well to see what's the actual depth you can safely cross. The standard raised air intake is fairly easy to remove. You do however have to trim some bodywork to fit most aftermarket snorkels to this vehicle. The suspension, um, I've opted for Tough Dog suspension, coils, leaves and shocks, as well as a sway bar and a stabilizer. This makes quite a big difference on this vehicle and in places like Australia, this also qualifies as a GVM upgrade. I'm installing a two inch or 50 millimeter lift kit with heavy duty coils, leaf springs and foam cell shocks. These Tough Dock Rolf shocks are quite the upgrade compared to the factory shocks. These 53mm bore foam cell shocks combined with Tough Dock coils are perfect for four wheel drive applications. The leaf springs are also spec for my eventual weight at the back and they also come with greasable shackles. I usually recommend that you understand the end weight of your car first before fitting suspension. The guys from Outdoor Campers and Opposite Lock made light work of this installation. Thanks guys, much appreciated. The adjustable panel rod allows the axle to be re-centered after being lifted. The steering damper straightens out the steering after a lift and larger tires. So far, I'm very happy with the suspension setup and I will give you long-term feedback once we've added weight to the vehicle as well. Last, but definitely not least, I also added LAS wheel spacers to correct the age-old Land Cruiser rear wheel track issue. Be sure to buy quality spacers, you don't want these to come off while you're driving. I hope you enjoyed this uh, first episode of the build series. Uh, in the next episode, we'll be fitting some new tires. Uh, we'll also be looking at the interior, some performance upgrades, and ultimately, what we put on the back. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Until next time, get out there.